Salutations and shit, folks. Welcome, welcome, welcome back to another episode of Travel and Shit, where I, your host, D. Carrie, have an experiential conversation about the nuanced ways that travel intersects with regular life. I am going to start this off by letting you guys know a little bit of real life. I have been having the most technical difficulties. It has taken me over a week to record this one episode. This is about the fifth time probably that I have sat down to record this. This is the fifth, the fifth, the fifth, uh, version or so of this one episode. I had a failed, uh, genius bar attempt. Um, yeah. On a brand new computer at that, on a brand new computer. And it was failed genius bar attempt because it actually told us we could go to micro center, but then I would have had to leave my computer overnight. And would it have caused any problems, honestly? No, I have a backup, but I want the people with my computer and I wasn't going to go back there the next day to pick it up. That was really the most of it. Um, But long of the short, I have been going through it, honey. Okay. Going through it yet. I persevere. I'm getting y'all this episode. Um, In a nutshell, this is about my personal red flags when traveling. These are the things that I look out for. These are the things that I, for the life of me, do not understand why they exist in the facility, in the, the, not the facility, in the, um, in the ways that they do show up. And um, I figured I would jump here and have this little discussion with you guys starting with accommodations. So I've been seeing multiple tweets about people are done with Airbnb and how, you know, um, mm, there was one that I think he was booking something, maybe a day. It was like $350 for one night. And then the cleaning fee was like $375. And long of the short, it was like one night after all the fees, taxes and all that shit was like 900 plus dollars. So that was followed up with something like, um, essentially that, yeah, I'm not going, or this is why I don't fuck with Airbnb, or this is why I'd rather look for a hotel, whatever, whatever. Um, I personally am an Airbnb girl through and through for the most part, because one hotels are wild expensive. While there are very, very expensive Airbnbs, honestly, it's the market. If you're in an expensive city, everything's going to be expensive. Hotels, Airbnbs, it's all got a hostel in a pricey market is going to cost you more than a hostel in a um, more financially feasible or a less expensive market. So either way, if you're in an expensive city, it's just, just going to be expensive. It is what it is. Um However, I have personally found that hotels will, while a lot of them do have very nice amenities, generally I can't afford the hotels that have those really nice amenities. My general budget for a night is no more than $150. Um, And I personally would rather spend $150 and get more than one room. Um, I'd like to spend more than $150 and get an actual kitchen. I'd like to spend $150 and not have to deal with like um, 5,000 other people competing for the same two elevators, you know? Um, Now, it's not to say that there are not Airbnbs that are in residential buildings um, or mixed-use properties. Uh, We definitely have stayed in all types of Airbnbs. However... I generally will book and find the best experiences when I book um, full, I don't know what my phone is doing. When I book the entire house to myself or do like a basement apartment or like an in-law suite or something that is um, attached, I personally think that I have had 
these good experiences because of the red flags that I looked for. And the first and most important one is, mm, yeah, I'll say the first and most important is fucking reviews. Honestly, I will not stay at new listings. They're gorgeous a lot of the time, but how do I know that that's what's actually there? To my understanding, Airbnb doesn't have like a truth telling team. You know what I mean? Like they don't just pull up to the listing and make sure that the pictures match the location, right? So in order for me to feel confident that what I'm booking is what I'm actually getting, I go through the reviews. I wanna read the people talking about what that bed actually felt like because at this bigly age, if I sleep wrong, I'm gonna feel it for a couple of days, not just the next morning. So I do my best to try to get something, um, a listing that's going to have a comfortable bed. I wanna see what the people feel about how long it took them to get from the airport or how much that cab or you know train ride cost from the airport to where the accommodation is. I wanna know if it's walkable to you know stuff that's in the neighborhood. What are some suggestions? There's a little cafe two blocks up when you come out the house, make a left, walk up, it's two doors from the big red house, whatever. I am reading the fucking reviews because that is going to make or break a decision, especially when it comes down to like, I have two or three that I love or generally I will have like a list of like seven houses and I will painstakingly go through choosing the one that I like and I usually end up making my decision based on what is left by the time I'm actually ready to book the uh, accommodation. Additionally, um, I want to know what or what not the interpersonal experience is like, um, whether or not the hosts will interact with you, whether or not there are like weird neighbors, whether or not the community or the, um, the block that the house is on has any kind of kinks or quirks or little things that people notice and decide to share with other people. Um, also that cleaning fee, while there are some places that get wild with it, you don't have to book those. Not every house has an ex- like an exorbitant, an exorbitant, exorbitant, exuberant, excessive. Let's just stick with what I know. And I do know exorbitant, exuberant. I just don't know which way it goes. It's been a long day. However, you get what I'm saying. I just won't book houses that have wild fees. I also don't book houses that have wild fucking rules. I'm a big adult. I'm grown. I'm not running like my life and the places, I'm not choosing a place that's going to give me dorm room instructions. I'm not doing that. You're, I am all for respecting community. I'm all for respecting neighbors. I happen to be one of those people that you don't have to ask to be respectful. However, the rules aren't made for people like me. The rules are made for people that don't give a fuck about other people. So while I do not take offense to listings having like a lot of stipulations and a lot of rules and, you know, strict guidelines, it ain't for me. I get that some people are okay with that. And a lot of those places will also have very good reviews. Um, And a lot of those good reviews are because those rules are in place. I can see how someplace that's got a lot of reviews may be immaculate or spotless or everything is in order, or it could just be for show. Um, Long of the short, I am not living my life by someone else's stipulations or standards. So that is a personal decision that I decide to make. I'm not booking there the same way. I'm not going to book someplace that's got a cleaning fee that costs more than a night that I'm going to stay there. Um, I enjoy being in communities when I stay places. So, and I am not sponsored by Airbnb. I just ride for them because that's generally where I spend, that's where I spend my money. I would love to be, say, loyal to a particular hotel chain or um, experience a lot of uh, a few more uh, boutique locations and destinations. I would love to give that a shot. I'm just not there yet. I don't have the bread for that. So until I can, um, find reason to be loyal to a particular chain. Other, I mean, points, that's a huge reason to do it, right? But I also haven't exactly had an experience except for the Goodwin Hotel. The Goodwin out in Hartford, Connecticut, best hotel I've ever stayed at. Absolutely gorgeous, 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 gorgeous. We had a 
fucking kick-ass room. It was um like a, it was, I would say it was a suite. Gorgeous bathroom, nice little dressing area. It was like in a nice little nook by the bathroom, uh, which was also kind of in the bedroom, which was separate from like the sitting room. So there was like a nice little living room, a uh, door to the bedroom, whole shebang, beautiful accommodations. That was the nicest place that I've stayed. That was the nicest place I've probably ever stayed. Mm, I would say so. Even like the hotel that I stayed at in Qatar, it was just supposed to be like a five-star hotel or something very elaborate. But when I got there, it didn't feel five-star to me by my American standards globally could have been 12 stars. I don't, I don't know, you know, but, um, to me, I would say, and also I'm not even going to say like someplace like Qatar in the middle East wouldn't have better standards of luxury. Cause they got wild bread, like wild bread. So they know way more about luxury than I do. That couldn't have been a five-star hotel. Um, it was nice. Don't get me wrong. But the nicest one I've said that isn't it? The good one. Um, so I don't necessarily have a particular reason to consistently book with a particular chain. I do not get uh, points and benefits and stuff at this current juncture. That may change in the future, but where I'm at now, Airbnbs and where uh, Airbnbs are where it's at. Um, also with Airbnbs, pay attention to the fucking pictures, scroll through one, scroll through all of them. If I'm missing anything, particularly the bathrooms and the bedrooms, I'm not booking. I need to know where I'm sleeping and I need to know where I'm bathing. If any of those pictures look sketch or if the angles look wild, like if you give me 13 different pictures of the living room, if you give me six pictures of, you know, the different photos and trinkets and vases and you know, the toaster and the coffee maker, but I don't have any pictures of the bathroom, red flag. What are you hiding? If you don't include detailed pictures of the bathroom and the bedrooms, I feel like you're lying. So another reason why I'm not going to book there. So for Airbnbs, pay attention to how much they're charging you for cleaning fees. Cause also baby, I'm not taking out your trash. I'm not starting the washing machine. Will I wash my dishes by hand? Absolutely. I, I don't own a washing machine. So I don't know how to fucking work a washing machine. So you ask, you telling me or trying to imply that I'm supposed to do, I don't give a fuck if they're in the rules. That part's not getting done. Um, just not because I don't know how to work them and I'm not about to spend time Googling how to work something um, when the the potential or the likelihood that I could break it or put it in with so and then also it's just like I always wash it by hand before I use it also because I don't know who washed it the last time you see what I'm saying so I just feel like and then also how about this I saw another tweet that they were like um taking out the trash and something else is not part of cleaning uh it's not part of the cleaning fee and I'm like well, then get better cleaners. I don't understand how taking out the trash is not part of the cleaning fee. How do you clean something without taking out the trash? In essence, it's not clean if the trash is still there. It's like, so if you sweep and mop the floors, particularly if there is someone sweeping, I get if it's, you know, if you just use vacuums, if you've got a good vacuum and it's capable of getting everything up. I'm a broom girl. I feel like brooms do a better job. Um, well, preliminary job. I would prefer to sweep first and then go in with a, uh, neither here nor there. Why am I going into that kind of detail, right? Girl, I am tired. Um, I'm going to sweep. So if somebody is sweeping the accommodation, what do they do with the trash? Do they not throw it in the trash can? So if they're throwing that in the trash can, are you leaving this now air quote here, clean room with trash in it, even if it's the trash on the floor? No, you take it out, right? Because that is part of cleaning a room. You take out the fucking trash. Take out the trash. I'm not doing it. 
take it out. The one time that I did take out the trash was when we stayed in Vermont. And that's because we were in the middle of 22 acres of property and I don't do wildlife attacks. So I completely understand why they've got compost rules, why they've got wet, dry, different uh, places that the trash goes. Why like that being detailed makes absolute sense. We are in the middle of the wilderness. There are particular things that you just have to do differently in that type of scenario. And I can acquiesce to that without a fucking problem. Otherwise, bro, we're in the middle of Seattle. I don't know what day your trash day is. I'm not running up and down these hallways trying to figure out where the trash chute is or where the compactor room is. I am not doing that. I'm not trying to engage with people that live here or other people and not happening. So, um, rules like, um, quiet hours, it's a community. I get it. I'm also not a very loud person anyway, but I can understand ask, you know, like notif saying 10 o'clock is this building's cut off or midnight, like 10 o'clock is quite early, but like generally they'll say things like midnight, 12 o'clock or whatever, respectable. Um, but I'm not, mm -mm, not happening, not taking all the trash. All right. So that was, um, one, two, three, four. Yep, I have those four points for accommodations. Airlines. I don't know if this is a red flag per se, but it grinds my gears. And mini commercial break, pause. Congratulations to one of my best friends, Miss Courtney Noel Simmons, who's soon to be brown because my baby got engaged. Congratulations, my love. I love you so much, Kelvin. Welcome to the family, bro. But I mentioned that because her younger sister is a flight attendant. And I was thinking about this episode because this is the 15,000th time, 50, 11 times I tried to do this episode. But I was able to ask a flight attendant, baby, why don't we all just board from the back? Even she thinks it's fucking stupid. She said, because that would make too much sense. Apparently there's no real reason why they don't board everybody from the fucking back. Um, I understand military, people with disabilities, people with children or, you know, sky premiere this, that, and you know what? They probably do that because otherwise they wouldn't be able to charge you for boarding early. And there we have it. It's a fucking money grab, like everything else. Board from the back. If that's where I'm going, let me get on first. Why am I getting on after me? In, in 21F, why am I getting on after someone that is sitting in 9R? I mean, well, 9B, there is no R. 9B, oh, um, nope. Uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. I think J, K, and L might be the furthest because I think you might have like three or four rows of aisles, which I think is the largest plane I've ever been on. Anyway. If I'm all the way in the back, let me get to the back. I don't want to have to climb over people that are sitting in front of me. I don't want to have to fight for all this overhead space. Let me get to the fucking back. Speaking of overhead space, another thing that grinds my fucking gears. Overhead compartments are not for your pocketbooks, backpacks, coats, your packages and bags from all the shit that you were buying in the airport. Can they go there? Yes. But those things go there after the carry-on luggage gets stored. Everybody that books, right? Everybody that book, everybody that either pays for their carry-on or pays for the seat that includes the carry-on, all those things, those are the bags that go first. All that other space, that's where you fill it in with your coat. That's where you fill it in with the extra pillow that you don't really want right now, even though I don't know why you would want to put a pillow up there because why would you use it after that, right? But those bags go first. And when you put those bags up, put them up in the way that they're supposed to take up the less space. You don't lay them flat. You turn them on their side. Handles to the to the door like so that you can just grab the handle and go don't put the wheels that way so that when you open it the wheels just hit you in the fucking face handles out wheels in bags up right this way it's like you guys never fucking played tetris they all fit together they tessellate and in those empty space and like once everybody has their bags up in the appropriate manner up in like in the 
the top of the bag going up and down, if that makes sense. It probably doesn't, but there's a right way and a wrong way to put your bag up there, especially when it's a full flight. If it's only 12 of y'all on a 200 person plane, by all means, lead them bags however you want them. But when you've got a lot of people up there and you're trying to optimize space, put the bags in there so that they take up the least amount of space. This way, everybody that has a backpack can put it up over the um in the overhead space and doesn't have to have it un- uh, under their feet. I am not that large. I'm about 5'5", five, five, 150 pounds, give or take. I get uncomfortable sitting on those planes. So I completely understand that somebody doesn't want their, somebody that's 6'2", doesn't want their, even if you're like 5'7", five, 5'9". Five, However, I don't want things under the seat in front of me, right? But I understand that my, first of all, I don't want my backpack not right in front of me because I'm gonna need something out of it before the flight is over for one. I'm not trying to climb over people and then go up there and then have somebody else's shit fall out. I don't want to do all of that, right? So I understand wanting your bag in front of you. I mean, I understand, well, for me, I get people that want their bag in front of them for people like me. However, I am not dense enough to not get that people don't want the little bit of space that we have to be optimized by a bag and not them. However, if you are choosing to put something that can fit under the seat overhead please do it respectfully please do it so that it's not in the way of a suitcase that cannot go under the seat yeah so that is my rant for that part of the airline section um next is oh hmm. I actually understand why people stand up as soon as the plane lands because I'm at that age bitch my back hurts too however I don't understand the absolute rush to get going unless you've got like a connecting flight those people I've been there I get it it is like heart-wrenching to know I've got 20 minutes to get to wherever this mystery terminal is I have no idea where this gate is I'm hoping that it's in the same terminal and that I can get there without issue so for those people it would absolutely help if you didn't have a bunch of randoms just standing there uh, not really doing anything but standing right um that's it's one of those things that i'm kind of like i tap dance on the line like girl sit down we're not going anywhere people have stopped clapping i'll give them that Uh, i feel like people only clap now if there's like really bad turbulence but um i can't remember the last time i heard somebody clap on a plane um and i'm okay with that Um, I don't think you deserve, like, unless there's really bad turbulence, like this is their job. They're good at their jobs. Like they're going to land the plane. You're here because you pretty sure I thought that you trusted them to land the plane. So having to clap for them is, it's a bit much, right? You don't clap for your teachers at the end of the day. They do their job and then everybody goes home and we do it again. But, um, y'all gotta get better. Y'all gotta get better. Like this whole And then the looking and the, like, calm down, calm down. You standing up now isn't getting us off any faster because you standing here and you're not even like being proactive. You know what I mean? Like you haven't gotten your bag. You haven't like gotten your shit out the seat. You're just standing here to be in the way. Sit down. Unless you are like ridiculously uncomfortable and you need to stretch and you just, you know, shake it off or whatever. By all means, do that. But for those of you that aren't in pain, stay out the way. Sit the fuck down. It's not getting us out onto uh, into the uh, airport any sooner. What else did I have here? Um, oh, also related to standing. You're not going to get on this plane any faster by standing in the way of people who are supposed to be boarding prior to you. If I am group A and you're group D, you standing at the foot of this fucking stanchion is not getting you on the plane before those of us in groups A through C. Move the fuck out of the way. Move out the way. If you don't want to sit because you understand that you're going to be sitting for the next six hours, I completely understand you wanting to stand. However, stand out of the way. Stand out of the way. Like I have seen so many People like not even ready to board, but like just anxiously waiting to board their planes and completely like blocking the entire hallway so that everybody else can get 
through the airport as if when you were trying to get to your gate, you wouldn't have wanted all these people to be out the fucking way so that you can get to where you got to go. Because clearly you're 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 anxious or you're nervous or you're whatever. Or you, you just got to be where you got to go so quickly because you're standing in the way with nowhere to go. Move. Sit down. Stand on a wall. Stay out of the way. I will never understand for the life of me how some people are so able and willing and ready to literally be in everybody's way it's like they're totally oblivious that they're in the way and i don't understand that i don't understand that um just move move unrespectfully fucking move don't stand in the way big pet peeve especially considering at this point we all have seats we all have a ticket whether it's on the phone or a piece of paper we all have assigned seats at this point. So what are we doing? And nobody would have to rush to get on the plane for that overhead space if everybody would put their bags up there in a way that made sense. There is a way that it works well for everybody. And that is what I think really stresses me about it is that it's not just a way that works for some people. It works out best for everybody. And guess what? You're part of everybody. So if what works best for everybody, if everybody gets to win by everybody just doing something that keeps someone else at front of mind, it is lost on me how that messaging or how that idea doesn't land on more people. Like I am, I completely understand that everybody's built different. We all have different um villain origin stories honestly we all um come from different places but if to me it's just logic if i do x or if everyone does x we all win i don't i don't i don't i don't that's not something that I even try to make sense of. That's one thing I learned about working retail. A lot of times it's not you. They're just stupid. Period. A lot of times it really just isn't you. If you don't understand something, if you're trying to make sense of something and it's just really not, it's not clicking in a way that, well, that don't make sense. Huh? It's because it fucking doesn't. It's nothing wrong with you. The shit don't make sense. And it's not you that needs to change something. It's somebody else. And so I'm not wrong on this. I'm not, this is, this is a hill, 10 toes down, stay out the way, move, 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 move. There's nothing you can really explain to me that is going to have me understand or think that people crowding the entrance to the boarding is going to get them anywhere faster. It, it, I, not happening. Um, ooh, yeah. So fees, I am, um, I'm not a fan of leaving too many things to chance and airplane seating. It's one of those things I'm not leaving to chance. So I don't like the aisle seat because I don't like people walking past me. Like if I fall asleep with my head to the side, I don't want somebody bumping me in the head. I don't want it because I'm that's that I am not putting myself in the position for that to be a possibility. I always avoid the aisle seat for that very reason. If the little cart is coming up and down the aisle, I don't want you banging into my foot. I don't want to have to move my foot. I So I don't sit in the aisle seat. I prefer the window seat because for one, I tend to uh, want to curl up, lay on something to go to sleep because for the life of me, I don't think I can actually, I, don't, I can't stay awake on a plane. I am going to go to sleep. So, um, and it's, it's easier for me to just kind of curl up and lay on the, uh, the wall of the plane. So I go for the window seat, but I don't believe in leaving those odds in someone else's hands. So I personally pay for my seat. I'm not, um, and I'm also not a solo traveler anymore. Excuse me. I travel with my partner. So if I'm gonna be someplace for four hours, if I'm gonna be someplace for 10 minutes, I want to sit with him. I don't want to sit with strangers. Why would I subject myself to sit with a bunch of people that I don't know when I could sit with my shorty? Like, 
it's always him. I always choose him. So that's where I'm going to sit. So I'm going to pay for us to choose our seats. That's just um, the more comfortable option for me. I'm not trying to negotiate with anybody to change seats. Um, So it's a no. I'm going to pay for that ticket. I miss the days when you just got to choose a seat when you booked a ticket, but it's a money grab. Capitalism wins. Fuck us, right? So that is something that annoys the hell out of me, especially when it comes down to now we got to have people, oh, do you mind if I, yes, I do. I'm not moving. So we paid for ours. We're staying here. Um, I don't, I no, I do. Everything is a money grab. Nickel dime. Honestly, personally, me, your girl D, I'd rather you just charge me more and have everything just included. Just fucking charge me more. However, in fairness, that's for me and the way I travel. I absolutely do see it being, um, a come up, if you will, for someone that it doesn't matter to. If you say are in a long distance relationship and you really don't like partner, he doesn't give a fuck where he sits. He'll sit wherever I do for the reasons I explained, but he doesn't care. So if he's just traveling by himself, he's not going to pay up for an extra seat. He's just going to say, I'm, I mean, excuse me, not an extra seat. He's not going to pay up to choose his seat. He's just going to sit where wherever they assign him. That ain't me. I'm paying. Um, but if you say travel a lot and this is a route that you're very used to, you've got a routine, you either go to sleep as soon as you get on the plane or, you know, you're going to be off the plane in like an hour or two hours and it doesn't really bother you. I absolutely understand why, um, maybe a small backpack and your body, that's all you need. You don't need to choose a seat. You don't need a carry on. You don't need nothing. I just need to get there. Those travelers, I compl- I'm sure y'all love the shit. If you're traveling for work, if you're traveling for business, especially if you have like a quick turnaround, if you're only going to be there for a day and you're coming back, or if you're going someplace where you've got all of your shit, if you live by coastal, if you live East coast, West coast, things like that, like there are plenty of people that it works for. So in fairness to y'all get it, girl. I'm glad that you guys have a, an option that works for you. And because I'm not a selfish person, selfish person you know, I guess it is what it is. I'm happy for you, you know, I guess, possibly, likely. I'm glad it works for some people. It just isn't something that I enjoy. I don't like having to pay up for a seat, but um, I absolutely will because especially on long flights, I'm not leaving that to chance. Not gonna happen. Uh, let's see, let's see. Um... All right, so the next one was car freaking rentals. <sighs> the fees. It is the fees. There is one of those things, again, just charge me more. Just charge me more and let me know that once I'm paid for this, this is it. I am always one of those girls that will get the extra driver coverage or like I always pay for that little bit of supplemental insurance. And in fairness to them people, I don't do the research. I know that there are plenty of credit cards that if you book with X card, then you um, are able to use like the card will cover for like insurance. I believe Amex has that option, but again, I'm not certain. And I even have an Amex. So you would think that that's something that I would know. Um, and that's on me, me a couple. If I don't want to pay those extra fees, I should probably figure that out. I got to call them people anyway. So I'll look into that. I'll report back later. But look into your credit cards. See if they give you an option so that you either um, earn points for the rental or even the hotel. I want to say Amex. I think these are all things that I've seen over time. I don't know if they're all still valid, but I believe if you combine your Airbnb with your Amex. Um, I want to say, cause there's Delta, but you get the Delta card with Amex, um, so that your flights and all that jazz, uh, earn you extra. Well, your purchases earn you miles as well as what was the other one? Starbucks. You can link your Starbucks and Lyft Starbucks and Lyft. You can link to your Amex card and you'll get 
points that you can use for travel. And I want to say that they will protect, I want to say in particular that I believe you get Delta miles for that. And, um, if that's your preferred airline, or if that's the airline that is a hub, someplace that you frequently travel, even if it's not recoup them points, like add them points up. I was telling boyfriend the other day, even in your mind, if you feel like, oh, I don't really use it, or we choose, we change different airlines, blah, blah, blah. You'd be surprised what you rack up over time. Even if you're not able to use your points for an entire, um, an entire trip, like round trip, you could use it for one way. You can use it for, um, upgrades. There are options, like you might run into some options at some point. So sign up for those, um, not redress numbers for the, the frequent flyer programs with all the airlines that you sign up for. You could even have yourself like a particular, um, Gmail or whatever that you always book with flights so that you can keep them all in one space and you don't have to see them if you're not traveling. Um, that's an option. If you feel like I want all them emails, I always unsubscribe to all that stuff, but I still have the account. Um, so look into that. Uh, because what the worst car rental experience I would say was Dallas. I talked about that with y'all. It like, I, I, I spent $900 on that rental. Sick. You hear me? I was sick that I had to spend that much. And I want to say it started at like six and change, which was bad enough. Cause we had the car for four days, maybe, maybe four days. And, um, there were all these extra fees. There was like a fee for the, about to say the Metro card. Um, there was a few for the, the easy pass and you're not from the area, right? So I don't know how, like, do you need the easy pass? Girl, I don't know. I ain't from here. How many tolls y'all have? Where are the tolls? Like, I'm, I don't know if I'm going over any bridges to get where I'm going. She's like, all right, well, if you don't get the easy pass, we'll charge you like $15 a day and any additional tolls should you incur the tolls. Like if you didn't pay the daily, like $10 or like $13 or whatever a day, you would get charged for the tolls as well as then getting charged for having to pay for, it was wild. It was wild. So it was just like, fine, we'll get that too. And then I think it was something like, um, the insurance. I think what always gets me caught up is whether or not I end up getting reimbursed. I want to be reimbursed for shit. Y'all could pay for it. It's your shit. I'd rather just pay you a couple dollars now and be a little bit lighter in the stress department because I'm one of those people that will consistently be worried. I'll be stressed. I'll be stressed. Oh my God. What if something happens? What if something happens? Um, I never want to have that damn shoulda, coulda, woulda, right? So I just pay for it. And again, that is me and my personal preferences and what makes me comfortable. And, um, y'all, that is one of the things that always, always boils my fucking blood is the extra random fucking fees. You think you just accommodate for an extra couple hundred dollars? Nah, it's never just a hundred dollars. The one time it was basically what the price was, was Puerto Rico. I think we like overall all together only spent like a hundred dollars and that was like with like extra shit when we got there. But, um, again, currency exchange makes a difference and all that jazz, but the extra fees is one thing that I remember. I think I was, I had to have been under 25 or I could have just been super broke at the time. I don't remember what the particular reason was, but I remember going, I was driving down to North Carolina to see one of my best friends, um, for her second baby shower. She was pregnant for the second time. And, um, her first child is my goddaughter. So I was, I just wanted to see my God kid. And also this is my best friend. Like she's having a baby. Like I'm going to be here if I can be here. So I drove down to North Carolina. And so I was renting a car because I don't think that my little hoopty would have gotten me down there at the time. And my grandpa was renting the car for me. And I'll never forget we got to that counter and I was just like, all right, yeah, whatever the standard is, bear, like, just give me a car. And he was just like, all right, well, what kind of car is this? 
And they were like, oh, they, he was talking to the guy or whatever. And he was just like, well, we can offer you, you know, an upgrade. We can put you. And he was just like, you want that? And I'm like, I mean, it was a charger. And this was in like the early 2000s when the chargers was like fly. And I was like, pop, that's all right. I don't really, I just need something to get me there. He was just like, we'll take the charger. And he put me in the charger. He, he, he was just like, no, nah, we're going to give her something nicer. We, like, we could give her, like, we're going to give her something cute. We're going to give her something. My grandpa really looked out. My grandpa really looked out. And I, um, I'll never forget that. I always appreciate that. I, I miss them a lot. I miss them both. I lost both my grandpas and I'm, I miss them both very much for different reasons because they were very different. But that is one particular story that I will never forget. And um, yeah, fucking rentals. Always a money grab. So it's all a money grab. Everything in every aspect. But guess what? Travel is so much more than vacation. And all the money that you spent and all the stress that you went through to either work to make the money to spend on the vacations or the money that you spend while you're on these vacations or whether you're traveling because it's something that's going on in your life. Whether you are traveling for loss of a loved one, whether you are traveling for medical treatments, whether you are traveling for work, you could be traveling for a multitude of reasons and it's not always vacation. And a lot of it is going to cost you time, stress, emotional baggage, all of it. However, remember that not only is it, I don't want to say scratch the initial way I was going to say it. Cause I don't say don't, for, I'm not going to get into that. It is absolutely an opportunity in whatever manner you are capable of receiving it. Because again, if you're traveling for the loss of a loved one, or if you are traveling for like a high stress reason, because you've got like a work trip or a work presentation to do, this may not be the trip for it per se, or it can be done differently. I will always, always harp on checking in. Give yourself that personal audit and ask, how am I going to be different when I get back? It don't even have to be anything deep. It doesn't have to be, I'm going to be a more mindful person. I'm going to be more aware of the people that I love. I'm going to be aware and just remember that life is a gift. It don't have to be that deep. It can be as simple as, you know what? I'm not an introvert. I actually do like talking to people. Maybe I should reconsider the type of people that I'm around that I don't want to talk to people all the time. Or maybe... Dang, I didn't even know they had this kind of food out here. I wonder what else they have out here. Dang, I wonder what else is in my own neighborhood. I'm going to try that new spot around the corner from the house. That's it. That's it. Give yourself the opportunity to try something new and to look at things in a new way. As much as I hate spending the money on travel, I always under, I always appreciate the travel. I blow money on the dumbest things. So as much as I do not want to pay extra for my seat choice, as much as I do not want to pay a cleaning fee, I also absolutely appreciate being able to stay in a really sick ass apartment with a beautiful view that someone is sharing with me. They're sharing their home. I get to stay here and I don't have to stay in like a regular box kind of cookie cutter hotel. I get to stay someplace that has a little bit of personality because I'd like to think that I got a little bit of fucking personality. And those are the things that I personally remind myself of when I'm crying over how much I fucking spent. Thankfully, I have the capacity to make more but I don't have more time. And what's really important to me about my time is the experience that I have with that time. And I have given myself some incredible experiences and I have loved showing up here every week to talk to y'all about them and the incredible ways that they have made my personal experience of my own fucking life way much more enriched. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and I hope you guys appreciate my labor of love because honey, the girl worked hard for this episode. So I hope that you enjoy it. And I hope that you come back and see me or listen to me next week for the next episode. All right, y'all have a good night.